Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Amen, amen, amen. I want you to join with me in welcoming our good evangelist back to this pulpit tonight. We love and appreciate Brother and Sister Aaron and their wonderful children that God has blessed them with. Brother Aaron has been such a blessing to this church for the last eight or nine years that he has been part of this assembly and we feel like he's home when he's in this pulpit and we want him to preach like he's home tonight welcome come and preach this pulpit is open our hearts are open praise the lord everybody definitely a great great uh, revival this has been a, a unique awakening to me because the um it seems like the Spirit has just taken us deep each service, deeper and deeper. A lot of times we go higher and higher, and, and we may do that toward the end of the week, but I, I sense that we just keep plunging deeper in the dimensions of the Spirit, and that is a, a, a powerful thing that God can trust the church. Usually as an evangelist, if it goes deep one night, you try to take it high the next night because the people can't handle uh, going deep very long. But this church seems to want the deep things of God, and that, that's a compliment to you. That shows you've been praying, and uh, God will show you. God will take you as far as you want to go. Uh, God will take you as far as you want to go. It's just a matter of you stepping out of the boat and saying, I want to try to walk on the water in the deep places. So, And I give honor to your pastor. Obviously, I love him very, very much, and I appreciate his vision for this city and for this church. And I give honor to Bishop Price as well, and glad he's here tonight. If it wasn't for Bishop Price, there'd be no church here tonight. Aren't you thankful for the man of God that fought the devils way back when for what you have here? And to my very good friend, Brother Darren Williams, who, who helped me when I was just a kid, just trying to preach and, and put up with a lot of immaturity and called pastors for me and told him to have me when I'm sure he was crossing his fingers and holding his breath, and, and I was making messes on the campground in Florida, and he was having to clean them up, and kind of like an older brother for a long time. I love him very much, and I'm glad he's here tonight. Amen. Obviously, my wife and kids, <clears throat> people tell me all the time, I just want to be an evangelist, just want to do what you do, and then I just send them over to my wife. When you get married and travel, it's, 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 it's fun for the preacher, not as fun for the wife when you have to go, 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 go and live out of the suitcase, but she does it like a trooper of her very much. Amen. Shall we go deeper one more time tonight? Isaiah 59, verse 16, and then Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, and also verse 28. Isaiah 59, verse 16, and then Romans 8, 26, 27, and 28. Praise God. I've been searching throughout the day what the Lord wanted. I, was, I know that in one of these services, he's going to turn it up, and we're going to step into massive demonstration. But I'm just waiting on the release of the Spirit, and I believe tonight is a, an essential service for what's going to happen this weekend. Isaiah 59, verse 16, says, And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. And then Romans chapter 8, verse 26, through verse number 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 28, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And I want to preach tonight from the subject, 
there is a war on the floor. There is a war on the floor. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you've done in this week revival already, the, the dimensions of the Spirit and revelation that you've taken us to, the prophecies you've given your people and the breakthroughs that are taking place as we speak. And I thank you for the people that are here tonight because I know specific people have come to this service and you're going to speak to them and take them into a dimension of prayer that they've never been to perhaps in their entire life. I worship you and I praise you. Let the warriors of this house lift up their voice right now and magnify the name that's above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you lift up your voice right now? I bind every demonic spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Loose your power and your authority. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Thank you for standing. The New Testament describes four dimensions of prayer that the saint of God can step into any time they hit their knees. The first dimension of prayer, the Bible said, is that we pray with understanding. That is where you pray in your own native language. If you speak English, uh, that is where you're praying in English. You're understanding everything that you're saying. This is the first dimension of prayer, and oftentimes when you're in this level of prayer, you don't feel anything when you're praying. Have you ever been there before when you were praying and it felt like your prayers were just hitting the ceiling and coming right back down? You're praying the same things over and over and over possibly. Your mind is racing, but you're you're praying, but you're praying in your own tongue. You're praying in English, although this is a very powerful weapon to pray, especially if if you have trouble praying every day. I recommend tomorrow morning when you get up to enter this level of prayer. And even you may not understand everything that, that God's talking to you about, but just speak what comes to your mind, what you hunger for. This is a level of prayer that we all should be able to enter into. It's relationship with God, and we all should do this every day, talking to the Lord about things that we see and things that we desire and things that we need. And this dimension is obviously very easy to tap into. And the second dimension of prayer is praying with an unknown tongue, the Bible said. That's where you're praying without understanding. That's where you're praying and and you're speaking in tongues, but yet your mind is not on what you're praying. Have you ever been praying and your mind been at the grocery store or at work? One, two, three, three people, four. Okay. Well, we might be missing it right now. <laughs> so you're, you're praying and you're speaking in tongues. And this is, I, get, I feel condemned when I'm doing this. I'm speaking in tongues, but my mind's not on what I'm praying about. I'm praying the right thing, but I'm not, I'm not weeping. I'm not breaking through. My mind's elsewhere. That's praying without understanding. That's praying in an unknown tongue. You're, you're, the Spirit is praying, but your mind is elsewhere, and you're still in control when you're praying in an unknown tongue. You can stop and start any time that you want to. Then there's the third level, which Jude says, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's where you're speaking in tongues, and you're worshiping God. And many people mistake this dimension as the dimension of intercession because they're crying and they're weeping and they're speaking in tongues. And so they assume I'm interceding. But that's not intercession. You're still in control when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. You can still stop at any time you want to when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. And we should all pray in the Holy Ghost as much as we can. If you have the Holy Ghost, you ought to try to pray every day in the Holy Ghost. If you do not have the Holy Ghost, you should not leave here tonight without the Holy Ghost. And you can pray every day in the Spirit. But the fourth level and the highest level of prayer is intercessory prayer where the Spirit takes over you. And you don't stop when you want to stop. And you don't even know what you're praying for. But the Spirit maketh intercession for you. In other words, he said the will of God is prayed through you. So when you begin to pray and you step into intercessory prayer, sometimes the Bible said it's groanings which cannot be uttered. It doesn't, you don't even know what you're feeling and what you're praying. But you're in such a place with God that you know I just can't stop. You might want to stop, but it just keeps flowing out of you. Why? Because because the Spirit has grabbed your body and is now praying through you. And no matter what you think, the will of God is happening somewhere in the world when you enter the place of intercessory prayer. 
You can pray in the Holy Ghost and not get an answer. You can pray in tongues and not get an answer. You can pray in English and not get an answer. But if you tap in to intercessory prayer, something will happen across the world. You may know about it. You may never know about it. But the will of God is being unleashed when somebody says, I'm going to get into a place of prayer that I've never been to before. And the Spirit can pray through. Intercession is not easy. Leonard Ravenhill wrote, the most selfless person in the world is the intercessor because intercession requires you putting your own supplications and your own desires on the back burner and praying what the will of God is. Sometimes you'll go to prayer and you want to pray about your raise on your job or the car that you want, but God has instead someone in China that's going through hell and he wants to know, can I trust you to put your stuff that you desire on the back burner and can you tap into a dimension where I can use your prayer and I can walk into China and touch that lady that's going through. I wish I could get someone to understand that God's looking for someone that he can trust and he can take them into a place where their body is a willing vessel to be used for him to flow through so he can operate in other places of the continent and of the earth. There's praying and then there's interceding. You tell me you're praying for me, I'll thank you. But if you tell me I was interceding for you, I'll expect something to happen in my life. Praying is wonderful, but intercession means the Spirit of God was praying through you. And something's going to take place. Hannah, the Bible said, prayed so hard that she poured out her soul before the Lord. And the priest that was near her did not understand intercession. And he slapped her on the mouth because the words that she was trying to pray would not come out of her mouth and he thought she was drunk but she was so in tune with God her prayer was to have a child and she got so deep into intercession that nine months later the greatest prophet that walked the planet in his day Samuel was born through her womb he was so powerful that none of his words ever fell to the ground everything he prophesied came to pass because there was a lady that tapped into intercession and said, I'm not going to get up until I pray the will of God through me. Hmm. <laughs> Intercessors are very lonely. Intercessors do their best work alone. They don't need a song in the background to keep praying. Hello, America. Most people, as soon as the music stops, the prayer stops, especially in altar calls. But an intercessor does not even need music in the background. They know that when I hit my knees, something's going to happen, and they can tune out everybody around them, everyone in front of them, everyone behind them, people laying hands on them. When you break an intercession, you enter the Holy of Holies, and you don't care what's going on around you. You just want to know, can God trust me to pray through me and something be done? Do you want to really change the world? You can change the world from your prayer closet every single day. We have so many people that think they're not not world changers because they never travel physically anywhere. You can change the world from your bedroom tomorrow morning if you get in a place of prayer that God can use all over the world. In a service like this, an intercessor cannot wait to hit the floor. They said, Daniel, we're going to throw you into a lion's den. He said, you know, you've come way too late. I've been on the floor three times a day. When they threw Daniel in the lions, then an angel was already down there waiting on him. Had Daniel not been hitting the floor every day, no angels in the lions then waiting on him. God got ahead of the enemy. Because somebody was waiting and warring in the spirit way before he got arrested. They said, don't pray. He said, you can't stop me. And they threw, we're going to throw in a lion's and you're giving me a miracle opportunity. If you throw an intercessor into a, be careful when you mess with somebody who's got a dangerous prayer life. Don't type everything you want to type on Facebook about an intercessor. Don't just say what you feel like gossiping about when someone's a prayer warrior. You don't want to go there, sweetheart. When somebody walks with God. You don't want to mess with
with them like you think it's no big deal because intercessors are powerful and they are precious to God because he searches the world and he looks for intercessors. We got a lot of people that know how to talk to everybody else about people's stuff, but they don't know how to get in tune with God about someone in the world. No idea. I am so sick and tired of people telling me, I'm going to pray for you. What they really mean is, I'm going to talk about you. It's not about what they have for lunch, it's who they have for lunch. intercessors are people that are known in hell. I know this is not the case in this church, but I've been to several churches in America where hell knew nobody on the platform, but an old lady on the third row, they knew for sure. They had no idea about the people on the platform because the people on the platform were gifted and talented, but they weren't anointed because they never prayed. But there were, and I, when I get to those places, I get very nervous, Brother Williams, when I'm preaching, because I know when I'm in an atmosphere where there's no people that pray, and I look for the, I look throughout the audience to see is there one intercessor, is there two intercessors, because I'm depending on that person to get in tune with the spirit while the service is going on to war against the demonic activity that's surrounding that church to help break me through when I preach. There's nothing more powerful to a preacher than someone who can intercede while he's preaching. Can I tell you that when? someone tells me I'm going to intercede while you preach, I expect the miraculous to break loose in that service because I know someone is going before me and opening the doorways in the spirit world to something breaking loose in the atmosphere that I'm preaching at. This one probably won't go over well. But I'm getting sick and tired of America preaching at churches, 300 people, 1,000 people, 800 people, and there's four intercessors in the building. A lot of people know how to pray, but no one can get an intercession. You know why? Because they have not got to that place where they're asking God, can you trust me with a dimension I've never been to before? Why would God trust you to pray for someone you hate? Why would God trust me to intercede for someone across the aisle that I hold a grudge against in my spirit? And when they're going through hell next week, you think God's going to call my number to pray for them? Because they don't need someone to pray. They need someone to intercede. An intercessor doesn't care about his feelings or her emotions or what the person's done right or wrong. All they care about is getting this thing through their spirit and releasing it out. And sometimes intercessory prayer, if you get tapped into it hard enough, you can get the answer out in one minute praying hard enough. But sometimes it can take an hour or two hours or even longer because you're in a war for a breakthrough to take place. And God wants to know who can I trust for certain things to happen across the world. I'm about to hit someone between the eyes right now. A lot of us know how to pray for ourselves very good. Who's going to pray for the little kid getting abused tonight? There. Oh, I thought we'd get a little more than that. Who's going to pray for the lady getting slapped by her husband? Who's going to pray for the man that's about to turn to alcohol? Hey, I'm about to wake this city up right now in the spirit. Intercessors, they don't care about their new car tomorrow. I want to know, God, can you use me in an apartment somewhere down the street? Can you take me to Miami right now? Can you use me in New York? Can you use me in Muncie? Can you use me across wherever the miracle needs to take place? Can you trust me to pray hard enough that you can walk through my prayer, walk into that building and stop the attack? They pray with a heaviness. The intercessors never even think of stopping to pray until the burden is ripped from their stomach and they fall to the ground. And usually when you're done interceding, you're exhausted and you're worn out and you're tired because the Spirit drains you when it comes through you. There's no flesh to glorify itself. Flesh is removed and the Spirit prays through you. And too many people can't tap into this. I'm just going to talk to you for a moment. The reason why we don't break an intercession, things like pride. Well, I just can't afford to get my shoes messed up. I just can't afford to do this in front of other people. And God says, well, I can't use her. I better find this lady's about to die over here across the state. She's about to get into a car wreck. But this lady at the church won't pray because she's too worried about her hair. 
So let me first search the state. Is there somebody on their knees in their house right now? Is there someone praying to be used of me? You know, Vesta Megan said one time, intercession is the only time in the world when you're into three places at one time. You're in heaven, you're in earth, and you're in hell. You're fighting demons that are attacking people. You're praying and God's sending angels, and you're also on the earth where you are. Only place where you're into three places at the same time is when you're in the spirit of intercession, and you're warring, and you're praying against things that are happening are going to happen could happen or trying to happen you're stopping attacks you're praying for breakthroughs you don't even know what you're praying most of the time but you're in such a dimension of trust with God that God knows your flesh won't get in the way tonight you'll pray what I want to pray through you and if I can find somebody that will pray what I want to pray through them I can use them more than I use any preacher on the planet One writer said hell has a top 10 most wanted list. If you're not on it, why? Can I tell you something? If hell has a top 10 most wanted list, every single one on the top 10 are intercessors. I promise you, whether they're preachers or not, every single one of hell's most hated people on the planet are people that know how to pray in the spirit and war. Because when they hit their knees, something happens every time. A few weeks ago, I was in Louisiana preaching on intercessory prayer, and this pastor's son was about 19 years old, just a sweet kid. He was sitting there, and he, just a really innocent kid, and he was in the service, and people were praying, and they were interceding, but there was something about him. He was tapped into something. He was praying with, a, with an intensity. He began to war. His body was shaking. He was on the floor just praying as hard as he could, 45 minutes to an hour. He just began to war. Then he got up, and he was still eyes closed, and he was pointing, and he was speaking and he began to move his hands and I began to hear, I thought he was speaking in some kind of Middle Eastern language he was warring and as he was praying, I said, I feel the Holy Ghost he is praying, he is in a situation that's about to take place where there's a, there, there's a hostage exchange and someone needs to be released and he is demanding the release in advance, he began to war people clapped their hands, they thought nothing of it, but the kid just kept praying he kept demanding, I could feel the Holy Ghost, finally I could see his body was getting exhausted. I went behind him. I said, press it through, Jesus. The kid fell to the floor. The burden lifted. Two weeks later, I'm driving down the road. I turned the news on. They said there was a hostage exchange between America and Iran. Seven hostages that were in America released because there were three Americans in Iran. One of them was a pastor from Idaho, and they held him for 12 hours, and they did not want to let him go. But someone kept coming in the room and saying, let him go. You cannot keep him. You cannot keep him. You may tell you what that happened two weeks before when the kid in Louisiana was warring. I'll tell you whether you believe it or not. God looks for people who will walk in the spirit and intercede for things to take place. I may have told you over the years But I remember back in Florida, a young man who and his mother, stage four cancer, had just hours to live. And he and his sister were there on a Wednesday afternoon. And they were saying everything they could say. And she was going in and out of consciousness. And I remember he looked at his sister and he said, hey, it's Wednesday night. We've got church tonight. The doctor said, you're not going anywhere. Your mom's not going to make it through the night. You're you're lucky she makes it through the afternoon. He said, we've got church tonight. He said, but you're, you're crazy. Why would you leave your mother at her dying point? He said, because if I can tap into that place in the spirit, God has one more chance. And so he walks away from his dying mother, and he goes to the altar. And when the, the prayer was started before church, Roger was on his face right here, and he was warring. And then as the service started, he didn't get up. He kept praying. And when they took the offering, he didn't get up. He just kept praying. When the preacher took this sermon, his text, the preacher, the kid just kept praying. When the preacher finished his message and called the altar call, he was still on the floor, warring in tongues, wailing on the floor. When the altar call ended, 
it, he was still there. When people were walking out, he was still there. Most people were home, he was still there. They turned the lights off, he was still there. He would not get up, and finally it lifted off him, and he got up, and he went to the hospital, and his mother was sitting up in bed, and they took a test the next morning, and there was no cancer in her body. You know why? Because when you shut Mahaya, when you step into intercessory prayer, you walk in a dimension where God can walk through you and God can answer things across the world. We were driving from Indiana to, I forget where we were headed last year, somewhere. We had preached somewhere in Indiana and we were driving. We were going through Kentucky. My wife, as I'm driving, begins to cry. And I said, what's wrong? She was reading something on her phone. She couldn't even talk. She cried harder and harder and harder. I said, what's wrong? Couldn't talk. Kept, kept crying. Finally, she composed herself and starts reading me the story. In Kentucky last year, a lady working at Walmart meets a guy working at Walmart. He's like 6'4", 350 pounds. She's got two little boys, five-year-old and three-year-old. He's got three kids. She invites him to move into her apartment, her trailer with him, her and her kids. And she has no idea that he's crazy. And the little three-year-old that she has, he didn't want to eat his breakfast, so the man punched the three-year-old in the stomach and tied him to the high chair and began to punch him repeatedly over and over and then threw him in the bedroom. And the next morning, they came in. 24 hours went by. They came in. They pulled him out and tried to eat again. The man beat him over and over, threw him in the room again. All kind of terrible things I won't even mention in the message. I'm just trying to give you a very vague description of the things she was telling me over and over and over. And finally, they threw him in the room and walked out when ate pizza came back and wondered why the kid was dead three years old and he had done this to the five-year-old the five-year-old survived and when I heard that as I was driving I've heard sad stories I've heard all kinds of things as I was driving the Holy Ghost said to me he died because there was no intercessor Just as out of nowhere, I began to weep because God every day searches the world, searches America, searches your town when things are about to go wrong. And he looks for someone who will be in the spirit enough to put their flesh down and say, Lord, if you use me, I may never have a clue what you're about to do. I may have no idea what's about to take place, but here I am. And I may never see what you're going to stop. I may never see. I may never hear the report, but I'm not going to stop praying until a miracle has been pushed through me. Listen to me. I know I'm not going to be popular with this message, but too many of us are so selfish in our prayer. We pray for us. We pray for our lost family, and we should. We pray for the church. We pray for us four no more. We're good at that, but we're terrible at praying for people we don't know. We don't pray for the lost with the same intensity as we pray for our family. Can I talk to you? We don't pray for the lost with the same intensity as we pray for our home. We don't pray for people that we'll never see with the same intensity and power as we pray for us because we are more concerned with what happens in our house. And then we wonder why God never uses us. Why isn't God answering my prayer? I've been praying for weeks for God to answer this about my job. And you don't even know that you're working next to a man who's about to attempt suicide. Oh, I'm going to talk to you. I can feel it in here. I'm digging it beneath the surface. You want to go deep? You said you did. Not all of you do. I can see it. But some of you do right now. Because when you really walk in the spirit, you have to be willing, whether it's once a week, twice a month, four times a month, or three straight days, when the spirit of intercession comes into your room, into your prayer meeting, you have to be submitted enough to God to put your calendar on the back burner, what you've got to do in the next 45 minutes, and say, God, whatever's going on right now, here I am. 
Where's the lady in here tonight that's going to pray until the lady across town decides not to have the abortion, even though the demons are screaming in her mind right now? Where's the man in here that's going to say enough is enough? That man's not going to hurt that baby anymore. I'm going to pray until God sends an angel. Where's the teenager? Where's the college student that's going to pray and say, God, you know the child. You know the kid at campus that's about to lose his mind. You know what's going on. I pray somebody wake up in the spirit. Where are the intercessors? We know we can shout. We know we can dance. We know we can run. We know we can do all the hyper things. Where are the people that know how to get on the floor and say, bring it hell. I'm not stopping until God does something. How do I know when God's done it? Because when you tap into that level of prayer, you will pray with such a fire and such a fervency that you will not be able to stop. And when it does stop, you will know from God's presence that he's done the miracle. He's gone through you. Who could be in Asia right now praying? Who could in, in Frankfurt, in this building, who could step into Iran right now and stop somebody from doing something crazy? Who in this place could walk? You know why some of us couldn't be used? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Can I say what I feel? A lot of us couldn't be used because we're racist. Who's going to pray for the Muslim man that's thinking about blowing people up tomorrow? Oh, I wish I would get a stare down right now. Oh, yeah. Well, I would never do that. That's why God never uses you, because you've got an attitude of hatred. And that's why you never see angels, because the word said, let brotherly love continue. Then it said, be careful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. You can't entertain angels when you don't love your brother and you don't love your sister. And people that God made, you hate them. Well, they do this and they do that, but they're still lost people. And it's getting quiet in here right now, because real intercession requires you to put your hatred down your racism down what you think about others down and if you can't do it don't expect God to anoint you to change anything in anybody's life because he's looking for people I'm sorry I offended someone in the back right now last time I checked Jesus died on a cross for everybody on the planet not just you and your sweet self I don't I bind every human spirit that would oppose praying for anybody besides your family or people that look like you. Real revival. It's a church when they pray for everybody in the community, everybody around them, everybody in the world. When I can truly get a God mentality that everybody is lost and they need the salvation, they need the truth until I get there. God can only use me in minor places. I believe this church is with me. I hope you're with me right now because you're at a crossroads. You want the revival to continue? I will stop preaching right now. I will stop this whole revival if I feel that that spirit is not going to let people pray like they want to pray. I bind every racist spirit in here in the name of Jesus. I bind it right now. I curse that from the throne of God into your house in the name of the Lord. That's not the will of God. That's not the will of God. There's a revival in Mexico right now. Who's going to intercede for it? There's a revival in Guatemala. Who's going to intercede for it? There's someone going to hell in Africa and they need somebody in America to get on the floor and say, God, send their angels do what you've got to do there's somebody in South America dying right now and they need God to do a miracle there's somebody in your own house that needs someone to pray but would you hit the floor for anybody besides who you always pray for the war is on the floor Obviously, not everybody can engage. You're not physically able to kneel down and pray. Then I'm, you pray where you are. 
But if you're able to get serious in prayer, I challenge you right now with every ounce of Holy Ghost in me to wake up and let God use you. Can God trust you to pray for somebody you never prayed for in your life? Can God trust you to weep for someone you would never ever weep for? Can God trust you to do, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Can God trust you to walk in a place that he would walk and pray a prayer he would pray? Can God trust you? He went to every house. He went to the sinners. He walked among them. He was attacked by all the Pharisees. I rebuke every Pharisee spirit, every spirit that says, no, I will not do that. It's got to be us. That's a spirit of judgmental. I, God, you're going to stand before God with that self-righteous spirit one day. He's going to require an answer. Why didn't you pray for people I died for? Why didn't you weep for people that were suffering? Who will pray for a child in danger right now? Who will pray for a mother that can't take it anymore, about to do something crazy? Who will pray for a man that's about to lose his home and his marriage and his what job? Who will pray? Who will will pray who will pray somebody go in the spirit somebody go in the spirit somebody go somebody go somebody go somebody go somebody go you may not know the baby's name you may know, not know the lady's name. Some of you are going to get a name come to your mind if you keep praying hard enough. Some of you are going to get a, an image of a person you may never see. Come on, when you tap into this level, you're going to see stuff. You're going to hear stuff. I'm trying to help you walk in a place in the spirit. This is this, I know this is deep waters, but this stuff is real. This is stuff where you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I can give you personal stories of times where God showed me a name or a person and I would get an answer a year later that that very day that I was praying, that person, I didn't even know who they were, but God intervened and changed their life because when you tap into intercession, you tap into the spirit, you tap into warfare, you disturb the demons of hell. Most demons aren't worried about our prayer meetings because we're praying for us and our revival and our breakthroughs and our blessings, but hell gets nervous when you get a global vision and say God wherever the need is I may not be able to stop everything going wrong on the planet but you can use me right now to stop one thing you can use me to stop one thing somebody somebody's going into a prison right now Someone's got a hit out from them in prison. Who will intercede for that man that's about to go into crazy danger? Who will intercede for the lady about to get into a car wreck? I'm challenging you. You want to learn to pray? Here you go. You want to pray deep? Here you go. This is the things God requires. Sometimes it's not comfortable for the flesh, but sometimes we've got to learn to say, God, not my will, but thine be done. Pharaoh told Moses when he was stopping him from letting the people go, entreat for me. That word is intercede for me. He was stopping the people, but he was begging for intercession. That's the world right there. They supposedly hate us, but they need our prayers. They need us walking in the spirit. Anybody can criticize. Anybody can judge. Anybody can sit back and talk from their flesh and their human spirit. But I wish somebody would enter the prayer closet right now and shut the door to everybody around you and say, God, take me somewhere. Take me somewhere. Take me somewhere. Take me to Alaska. Take me to California. Take me overseas somewhere. Where is the need that you want to stop if somebody would just intercede? The will of God would be done. Take me somewhere, Lord. Would you take me somewhere I may never be able to tell anybody about it but I'll know I'll know I'm somewhere in the spirit I may be on the floor in Frankfurt I may be on green carpet physically but you can take me somewhere into Europe you can take me into Germany right now you can take me to where that threat's going on in Paris you can take me you can use me right now Deep calleth unto deep. 
can God trust you? He wants to give you a globally impacting church, but you've got to have a vision for the world, not just your city. You've got to have a burden for other people that hurt, not just people that you know. This is what the Lord's been hammering on me. You can't just pray for the list of people that you know. You've got to get in the spirit because there's people that I want you to intercede for that you'll never meet. But if you just pray, I can answer that prayer. Don't worry. I'll send someone to your family, but you've got to be willing to pray for someone else's family. people are praying all over this room right now people are praying in their pews people are getting in the spirit people are warring right now if I was hell I'd be nervous because some of you are flat going into it some of you are saying I'm not getting up until something happens you may not tell me God but you're going to know that I touched the throne you're going to know that I've broken through I'm not leaving I'm praying until angels move I'm praying until demons back up I'm praying until hell gets nervous because I know that if I tap into intercession the will of God will happen so Somewhere. Walk with the Lord. Let him pray through you. God, if you want me to stop, you stop it. If you don't want me to stop, you just pray through me. Just pray through me. Some of you, God, <laughs> some of you, God's touch, he's trusting you. He's trusting you in a new level. He's trusting you with a new little prayer right now. You're stopping an attack. You're stopping an attack. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a two or three minute deal. You're praying an intercessory prayer. It's going to take a couple minutes and you're going to just stop something. And God's going to let you know that you stopped something. You're going to feel a release. But others of you, the situation is critical. Hell has surrounded that person with demonic spirits. Hell surrounded that house. Some of you could go into governments right now if you really tapped in deep. You could go into high places for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities. You're going to go into high kind of places. Spiritual wickedness. Rulers in the darkness. All kind of stuff going on in high places. That's the, that's the level of intercessory prayer that's available. You could go to the White House if God really got to trusted you. If God could trust you to pray things. You could go into places you would never walk in physically but the Spirit of the Lord could channel the miracle through your prayer. Some of you, your stomach is hurting because you're praying hard. That pain will go away when you're done. I'll pray strength for your body when we're done. God will restore strength into you. God will restore strength into you. But intercession sometimes can hurt. It can drain you. If you fight depression all the time, it's a sign you're probably an intercessor. The greatest signal in the prayer, the greatest prayer signal to go in intercession is when you're feeling depressed. When you're feeling depressed about something in your life, that's the greatest signal to get on the floor and enter intercession because you're already entering prayer with a heaviness and heaviness is required in intercession you don't just go through the motions in intercession you're not there if you are you don't just say Jesus over and over in intercession you don't just say oh I love you Lord you pray with a fervency you pray with a fire you pray with a brokenness sometimes God will require tears that you never knew could flow from your eyes because he wants to know can I trust you? Can I trust you? And he looked, and there was no intercessor. So he brought salvation unto himself. It sustained him. He was searching the world for somebody. Is there a man in here? Is there a woman in here? Is there a preacher in here? Is there an elder in here? Is there a teenager in here? Is there a single person in here? Is there a mom or a dad in here? Is there a child in here? You say, God, whatever you want, here I am. Pray through me. Some of you have no idea what you're praying about. You have no idea what you're just feeling it come through you. You have no idea what it is. That's something that's concealed by the Spirit. 
Just pray until God pulls it out of you. You may never know. But if you learn to walk in intercession, there'll be times God specifically reveals it to you that you're praying for certain things. Other times you'll have no idea. But intercession requires submission. It requires you saying, God, I'm here till you're done. I'm here till you're done. I'm praying till you stop. I'm giving you a major key in spiritual warfare tonight. I'm giving you a major key in how to take your city. Intercessory prayer, if it hit all of our churches across America, would rock this planet. It would rock this world. If the church in America would learn to intercede, would learn to pray for more than just their own church. When's the last time you prayed for a missionary? Last time you prayed for a pastor? Last time you prayed for someone across the state? Last time you prayed? Someone's on your mind right now for a reason. Someone's on your mind right now for a reason. Somebody's got hell worried right now. Somebody's got hell nervous right now. Are they going to tap in? Are they going to grab this and start walking in this? We can't sleep on that sister anymore. We can't sleep on that brother anymore. They just walked into a prayer life they never had. They just walked into a dimension where God's going to use them. Every time you hit the floor, there's a chance to change the world. Every time I hit the floor, there's a chance to change the world. There's a chance to not pray for myself. I'm so selfish. I'm so selfish. God, forgive me. For every time I've prayed about things that I needed you to do over the things that you wanted to do. I know you've got to pray for your own needs. It's natural. It's natural. But sometimes, sometimes we've got to get the mind of Christ. We've got to get the mind of the Spirit. We've got to get a vision beyond our situation. God can handle our stuff. We've probably prayed about it more than once. I bet you've prayed about your stuff more than 10 times. I bet you probably pray a a lot of times about the same thing. I'm sure God knows that you want that to happen. I'm sure God knows what I'm asking for over and over. But can God send someone to Japan right now? Can God send somebody to Australia right now? In the spirit can God work through. You are his hands. We are his feet. We are his vessels. We possess his spirit. We are the things that he uses. God uses people. God uses people. Somebody's homeless in the cold. Somebody's walking the streets tonight. There's a backslider on the streets right now. Somebody, somebody, somebody. I preached this in Alaska, and I literally was blown away at the the hunger at the youth convention. Four different people the same night prayed so hard. Blood was flowing from their body. Blood poured out of their, blood was pouring out of, that's praying with an intensity that I can't even fathom. The Bible said Jesus prayed so hard that his sweat was as drops of blood. 
The only way blood comes through the pores of the skin is if the heart is broken. That's when blood and water separate. That's a level of intensity I've never seen. People praying so desperately. Blood was flowing. I'm not asking for that to happen at all. But we've got to learn to get in the spirit to where we pray with such hunger. We are so carnal. We are so disconnected. We think we're connected because we see some miracles among us. But we really don't even know the depths of the things of God. The Bible said the deep things of God. Those are deep, there are deep things of God. We've got to wonder, will he trust me? To pray for the lost. To pray for my co-worker. Pray until something breaks. Peter was about to die in a prison cell. But the church prayed without ceasing. And when they entered that dimension, here came the angel of the Lord. They never saw the angel. But he still came. They never got to see the angel opening the doors of the prison cells. But he still did. Because somebody got on the floor and said, I'm not stopping. I'm praying till he gets out. I'm praying until he gets delivered. I'm praying until something happens. I'm pray- I will get God's attention. I will rattle the throne room of heaven right now. Somebody go to the gates of hell and call out that child's name and call out that person's name and demand a release. Demand a release in the name of Jesus. Enter into a new dimension right now. Enter into the new dimension of prayer. Enter into it. Walk in it. It may happen once a week. It may happen once a month. If you've got heart issues, I don't recommend doing this every day. Walk in the Spirit. This is an intense level of prayer. I feel your church is ready for it, so I felt the Lord tell me to give it to you. If you're ready for it, walk into it. If you believe God can do it, walk through it. Not my will, but thine be done. In Jesus' name. Some of you, if the Spirit has prayed through you, you feel drained. You feel like it's released. Just rest in the Holy Ghost right now. But others, keep praying. If you're just, if you're just not praying because you don't have anything to pray, you, you're not intercession. I'm not talking to you. But people that are, that are really praying, if, if the burn's still on you, then you just keep praying. I'll help you. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, someone whoever's in the battle, I'm asking you to send help. Send your angels right now to press this thing through. Press this thing through somebody's spirit right now. Press this thing through, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, bind everything opposing them, every spirit of hell that rose up against Daniel, when he prayed 21 days that you remove with Michael the archangel, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you'd remove anything in the way, any demonic spirit trying to hinder the answer, anything trying to press through and attack, I curse it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Help this person right now in the spirit to break through, to stop this attack in that home right now in the name of the Lord. Stop that invasion. Stop that burglary. Stop that attack on that lady, on that child on that man's mind in the name of Jesus stop that gang right now in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of Jesus
protect that man. Protect that preacher. Protect that missionary from the terrorists that are down here that are trying to get at it. Protect the people. Protect the people. Stop the evil in this planet. Stop the plan of Satan. I come against the mind of Satan in the name of the Lord Jesus. The strategies of hell. The plannings of the devil. The workings of the spirit realm. They are trying to use people as pawns to destroy. In the name of the Lord, stop something tonight. Cause someone to change their mind, to change the way they think, to change what they're trying to do. Wake somebody up, Lord, that's bound by Islam. Deliver them, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Protect the innocent. Thwart off attacks tonight in Chicago. Stop the shooting tonight, God. Don't let that thing happen. Don't let that gun go off. When that man pulls the trigger, don't let the gun go off. Protect that family from that investment. That's a scam, God. That's going to steal everything that they've worked all their life for. Hallelujah. The will of God is being done somewhere. Someone's being used of God right now. Someone's being used of God more than they ever have been before. And they don't even know. They don't even know. They don't even know. Someone's being used of God in a way they never dreamed they could be used. Hallelujah. Heal that lady who's dying of cancer. In Jesus' name, send your angels. 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 Our God, a firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground. As nations rise and fall. Once strong, now shaken But we trust forever in your name The name of Jesus Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Yeah.